Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Mehmet Fatih Karagöz and today with my colleague Cevahir we will introduce you a new software framework, Node, and how we can use this framework on embedded Linux devices. Uh, let's start with our agenda. Uh, we will start with some brief information uh, about this framework, Node, its advantages and disadvantages. Then we will move uh, to our second section, we, how we can cross-compile Node for embedded, uh, embedded Linux devices and it's also package manager. Then we will have a look at uh, the development environment. And uh, on my final part, I will show you some scripting samples uh, that can be usable on embedded devices. Then I will uh, give word to my friend and he will tell the development story of our surveillance application. Okay, let's start with some brief information about this framework. Uh, let's start, what is Node? This is the official uh, website definition from Node's website. We see that Node uh, is a platform that's built on Google's V8 uh, JavaScript runtime and it's for building fast, scalable network applications. And its main features are, it's firstly event-driven. It uses an event queue instead of a multi-threaded approach. And the second one, it's, it uses a non-blocking I.O. model, uh, which enforces us to use an asynchronous programming model and none of nodes internal functions uh, doing blocking I.O. And it's lightweight, uh, it's around five megabyte file size uh, in binaries and it uses about 15 megabytes RAM usage on our uh, sample application which we will show in demo. And it's efficient hardware usage enables us uh, to use it on embedded systems too. Uh, like all frameworks, uh, Node also has some advantages and some disadvantages. When we look at the advantages, uh, we see that it's open source, so you don't have to pay for any license fees. Uh, as we said uh, previously, its hardware efficiency enables it to use it on embedded systems too. Uh, it has a fast learning curve and I will explain in the next slide. Uh, the development time is very short, especially on network applications when you are doing lots of I.O. compared to C or C++ and we experienced it on, or in our uh, prototype surveillance application too. And the language is JavaScript. It's uh, JIT compiled, just in time compiled language. So it's easy to uh, learn it with respect to C++ or C languages and you don't need to compile any code so you can fix some bugs immediately and you don't have to create new binaries and push them to your devices. Also, the package manager is also very nice. Uh, you can find many modules for lots of different purposes and it's very easy to install them with just single line of command. Uh, when we look at the disadvantages, we see that it's a new framework, so uh, it has a small developer pool. It's, it can be hard to find local expert guys, but it's an active and growing community. It has very good community, so you can find help on internet. Also, it's uh, bad at CPU-bound jobs. When you do CPU-intensive coding, uh, you block all the uh, event queue, all the event queue, uh, and when you do blocking I.O., you block also all the event queue, so you should be very careful when programming, uh, keeping, in, keeping in mind that you <coughs> you're doing asynchronous programming. Uh, and finally, it's asynchronous debugging is also hard with respect to synchronous debugging. It's hard to trace the memory and finding memory leaks. And next, we look at the learning curve. 
not use JavaScript. It's a uh, comparably easy language uh, to learn. And if you know programming, you can adapt to it very easily. And most of the web developers are already familiar with the language. So this is a plus in my idea. Uh, when you are following the tutorials on internet, uh, you can start uh, building your basic applications, I think, in less than an hour. And it also includes the installation time, too. OK, when we look at the package manager, its name is NPM, not package modules. Uh, it uh, installs modules very easily, and it also works on embedded systems, too. Uh, as you can see, just with uh, one line of command, npm install express, we are installing the express module. It's a module for RESTful web applications. Uh, and it also installs dependent modules too, so you don't have to worry about them. And it has a global install option. So if you have uh, many applications using Node and you have common uh, modules, you can install them globally and you don't have uh, have to install for each of them. And these are some examples of the popular modules on NPM website. Here we used Express for our RESTful web server, and Socket.io we used for uh, web client and server WebSocket communication. And also you can find much more on NPM. These are just examples. Uh, we just mentioned uh, some brief information about Node. And in this part, I will explain you how we can cross-compile Node and its package manager NPM. OK, firstly, uh, the official address of Node is node.js.org. And you can uh, get the tarballs from slash download address. Also, you can use git to get the code. Also, its license is MIT license, which is, I think, quite flexible, so you can do changes. Uh, we built Node uh, using classic uh, slash configure and make and make install. But when we do it on embedded systems, there are some important configuration options that we must choose carefully. Uh, our first option is without NPM option. Uh, if you select this option, uh, you don't get the NPM package built with it. And uh, our second option is SSL option. Uh, normally, Node comes uh, open SSL built with it. But if you don't want SSL support on Node, you can choose this option. Uh, without SSL option is important because if you want to use NPM, you must have SSL support because NPM uses SSL for downloading modules from internet. And our third option is without snapshot option. Uh, we can't have snapshot views when we are cross-compiling. So <clears throat> if you want to have snapshots on your embedded system, you either build node on your target or use an emulator system and build on it. And what we lose without snapshots, the handicap is the starting time of node instance. Uh, the v is V8 instance uh, initialization time is shortened with the snapshot uh, support, but when we don't have it, we will wait around one, two seconds, I think, when we are just initializing the node. And the other options, I think, are clear. The CPU and this OS options, uh, which are, for our case, ARM and Linux. Uh, after deciding our configuration options, now we export our cross-compile binaries, and then we do configure with our options, and we make and make install. I personally extract them to a folder, uh, and then copy them to my embedded device. And then after these steps, I think we are ready to, do, uh, to execute the node on our target. OK, let's look at the development environment. 
Actually, you can use any editor uh, which supports JavaScript because it's not a compiled language, but some editors have some pluses. I personally use Gedit uh, when I'm working on Ubuntu and I'm using WebStorm working on Mac. The WebStorm has nice features such as code completion and um, some debugging support also. Uh, also, you have a bunch of options. These are just examples. For example, Cloud9 is cloud-based editor. You can use traditional IDs such as Eclipse, and it also has a plugin. So you have many options, and you can decide whichever you are comfortable. Node also have internal debug options too, and you start your Node script using Node debug my script JS example, and you are in debug mode, and you have some options here like setting and clearing breakpoints, or setting watchers, or look at the variable values on runtime. And some IDEs, uh, IDEs like WebStorm already, already have an interface for it if you don't want to do it on console. But personally, I not used uh, debugging in detail. The console, console logs were enough for me on my experiences. Okay, we now have the infrastructure for developing Node, and uh, where can we use it? We can use it for uh, scripting samples that can be used instead of Bash, maybe. And we have a development story, which my friend Javair will explain in detail. Now I will show you some scripting samples that we can use by Node. <coughs> Our first sample is, uh, let on off uh, function. Here we use the exec function of the child process module of Node, and here we have a function set let on, and it uh, sets the let's value to on, and here we use exec and make a system call to the let's brightness. We print an echo one. Uh, and uh, this is uh, as seen an asynchronous function, and when this system uh, call is completed, it goes to this function, which is a callback function, and it prints uh, this string to the console. Also, you can, of course, set uh, echo to zero, so you will have a let off function too. Uh, actually, with this function, you can write your own factory applications too, exec, uh, ex can execute any binary, and you can trace their status, and uh, you can relaunch them maybe when they die. And second, uh, second example is the CPU memory usage uh, application. We here use the OS module from the nodes internal modules, and here we have three functions, load average function, free memory function, and total memory function. This one returns us an array of three which uh, gives one minute, five minute, and 15 minutes average values of the CPU load, and we print it to console with this command. And in our second example, we get the free memory uh, amount and the total memory amount of the system, and we print them to the console with this. So you can do some uh, memory CPU tracing application using these simple functions. Uh, uh, my third example is the timers. I think it's uh, very powerful and easy to implement in JavaScript and Node. Here we are doing a LED blinking application, uh, which uh, makes LED one second on and one second off, and it goes like this. And here we have this timer function set interval, and this is the timeout value, which is one second, and each one second it calls this function. This function is defined here, and as you remember, this code is similar to my first example. Here just we change the value every time it goes into function from zero to one and vice versa. So we have a blinking LED example at the output. <coughs> my last example is an inner parser example. Here we uh, parsing a sample in a uh, in a file such as name with version, etc. 
And here we use the power of NPM. Here we install a in a parser module from NPM with this uh, line of command. And then we require the in a parser such as here. Then we have a function, a synchronous function, parse function. We give the file name and then uh, when it uh, finished the parsing operation, it goes to the callback function. In the data variable, uh, we will have the values here, such as data.version or data.name. You can reach the values. And if there is an error occurred when doing this job, it will go into the error, vari uh, error variable. Uh, and if there is no error occurred, it will be a null variable. So you can find if there is an error occurred or not. Uh, now my part is finished and I will give word to my colleague and he will explain you the implementation details of our surveillance application. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fatih. Uh, welcome again. Uh, I'm uh, Jawahir, and I'm going to talk about uh, example uh, surveillance uh, application. Uh, the purpose is uh, to demonstrate usage uh, scenario of uh, Node.js uh, in real-world application uh, by giving uh, more information about network class of Node.js uh, to run complete Node.js application in embedded platform. Uh, in the example uh, system, uh, there are two parts. The first part is uh, smart IP cameras, uh, which can uh, detect motion. And the second part is uh, server uh, site, which is located at command control center, uh, which monitors uh, cameras, uh, gather their alarms uh, in order to show user. Uh, this is the deployment model of example system. Uh, we have a server PC at command control uh, center, and we have uh, fake IP uh, cameras, which are IGAP version 2 uh, embedded ports, and they are all connected to each other uh, through Ethernet. Embedded Linux uh, is running on our uh, fake uh, camera, which is IGAP version 2 ports. Uh, we have a custom uh, kernel, uh, which has a version uh, 2.6.37. Uh, and then uh, we compiled uh, our Node.js binaries and all other binaries with GCC version uh, 2.6.3. Sorry, 4.6.3. Uh, this is the component diagram of our example system. We have, as I mentioned, two parts, uh, camera site and uh, server PC. Uh, there are uh, two software components at uh, embedded site. Uh, the first uh, component is uh, fake video application uh, to simulate uh, alarm messages. Uh, video application sends alarm messages to uh, server through uh, TCP server. Uh, and then uh, the second uh, part is uh, system manager application, which is written using Node.js. Uh, this uh, system manager application takes configuration from uh, server side and sends to uh, video application through inter-process communication, which is TCP connection. And uh, system manager application also uh, sends uh, heartbeat messages uh, to server. Then uh, our server side uh, listens these UDP heartbeat messages uh, to discover online cameras. And then, uh, server <coughs> sorry, server application uh, can send uh, configuration to online cameras through uh, TCP connection, and uh, our server uh, application uh, serves uh, static HTML5 uh, pages, uh, and these pages are written in AngularJS uh, framework. There is also a socket communication between uh, server application and static uh, HTML files. And uh, this is the overview of uh, our system. 
Uh, it's a little uh, complicated diagram. Uh, it just sh also shows uh, the messages of the system. Uh, after this point, I'm going to talk about uh, coding details of the each software component. The first one is uh, fake video application. Uh, it is fake to simulate uh, motion detection. Uh, in real world, uh, it actually a real video application which can uh, detect motion or you can do any video related jobs. Uh, it has connection to camera system manager through TCP. Uh, this is the example of inter-process communication between Node.js and uh, other uh, binaries uh, which can be written in different uh, languages. Uh, it can also produce periodic alarm messages at 10 or uh, 30 seconds, depending on its configuration. Uh, this is the uh, code snapshot from the video application. It, uh, this is just a TCP client uh, to connect camera system manager application, but its code is not uh, shown in here. After TCP connection to system manager uh, application, it creates a new thread uh, to send periodic uh, alarm, and then it tries to read a configuration message from the uh, system manager application. We have uh, two sample uh, configuration message. One can change a uh, video source, and the other uh, configuration message can change motion detection uh, mode. We have three options in motion uh, detection. User can turn off uh, the motion detection, or user can turn it uh, by setting uh, alarm period to 10 uh, seconds, or user can change the alarm uh, period to 30 seconds. Uh, after uh, taking uh, any configuration message, uh, this application sent uh, acknowledgement message to uh, system manager application. This is all about video application, just to simulate uh, periodic, periodic alarm messages by uh, setting its mode. Uh, this is the main application uh, to simulate uh, fake video camera. Uh, camera system manager application is written uh, in Node.js and it manages all other uh, software elements running on camera through inter-process communication. Uh, this example system, it takes configuration from server and sends this configuration message messages to video application. There are uh, two TCP servers uh, and one UDP client to send hearted messages. Uh, this is the, our first uh, TCP server uh, application at Camera System Manager uh, site. Uh, we use net module of uh, Node.js to use uh, TCP servers and uh, TCP clients. Uh, we create a TCP server by calling create server uh, function of net module. As you can see, uh, there is a callback function. I'll talk it later. After creating uh, this uh, TCP server, uh, we start to listen connections uh, from the given port, from the destination address. Uh, whenever a connection is uh, made, this callback function uh, is executed and when fake video application connects this uh, server, this socket uh, object is created, and then uh, the socket, uh, TCP socket object has uh, event listeners. As my friend uh, said, uh, not does, doesn't have any uh, training. It uh, runs through uh, event listeners and non-blocking uh, functions. In here, we have data and close uh, event listeners. Whenever a data is taken through this circuit, this data uh, event is emitted and the data is received. We can check the length of data by the uh, data objects uh, length member. And then 
uh, we can process the taken data as a byte array. As you can see, uh, we check in here opcodes. Uh, fake video application can send acknowledgement messages and uh, alarm messages through this uh, TCP uh, connection. Uh, whenever an alarm is taken from the video application, uh, we can uh, take it and tries to send uh, to uh, TCP, TCP uh, connection of uh, the other uh, device, which is uh, TCP connection between a uh, server application, which is uh, running on running at uh, common control center. In here, uh, we create the second TCP server, and then uh, we try to get new connections through the given port. As you can see, the host address is omitted, so uh, all connections, uh, which is directed to any IPv4 uh, address of the host, uh, is taken by this uh, server. As you can see, we have also uh, data and uh, close event listeners. Uh, in here, the data, when the data is taken from server application, uh, this uh, code tries to send the given configuration message to our uh, video, so video socket, which is a TCP connection between uh, camera system manager and uh, fake video application. And uh, the close uh, event listener is called whenever uh, the connection between server and uh, this application is fully closed. This event listener uh, is emitted also asynchronously. Uh, this is the UDP broadcaster to send heartbeat uh, messages uh, to server. We include a uh, datagram module of uh, Node.js to create uh, UDP uh, objects by create, uh, calling create socket uh, in UDP form. Uh, we can create a UDP uh, client object. After that, uh, we bind a random uh, UDP port in order to send heartbeat messages. In here, this is a, also a synchronous call. Uh, when this client bind a random uh, UDP port, this code is executed, uh, and we set broadcast to true to enable broadcasting. Uh, finally, uh, we create a new timer uh, to send periodic uh, heartbeat messages to server. As you can see, uh, we send uh, status of the camera, uh, device ID, status, location, and video source and video mode of the uh, video application, and time. We just send with simple uh, method. We give message of set of the message and message length and giving UDP port and uh, broadcast address. There is also a callback function. Uh, in this callback function, bytes is the uh, bytes number that are uh, sent su successfully. The error uh, object is the uh, error object which uh, you can uh, read if there is error. If there is no error, it will be null. Of course, we don't check uh, for this mistake in here. Uh, this is all about our embedded part. Uh, video application and uh, system manager application are running on our uh, IGAP version 2 boards. Uh, this uh, camera system manager application uh, uh, takes uh, 15 megabyte uh, from the RAM and nearly a zero uh, CPU power. And the uh, second part of my presentation is a uh, server application, which is running on uh, common control center. Uh, this application is connected to all online cameras. It discovers cameras by uh, listening, broadcast other uh, messages of the cameras. It configures cameras over TCP uh, connection, and it listens other messages from camera. Finally, uh, it serves uh, static uh, HTML5 uh, pages uh, to show uh, online 
cameras and uh, taken other messages to user. This is a little complicated code, but actually it's just a, a function. Uh, in this uh, server application, we create an if uh, UDP uh, object uh, from the datagram module, and uh, you can take uh, UDP messages by implementing a message event listener of the uh, UDP uh, object. And this function is called uh, whenever a message is taken uh, from the our UDP port. In here, message is the taken data, and our info is the remote address information of the uh, message source. Uh, after message is taken, we just uh, check if the uh, taken message is from the uh, registered camera or it's a nearly connected camera. If it is uh, taken from the already registered camera, we just uh, update info camera information. If it is a new camera, we just uh, create a new uh, device at the device's uh, object, and then we save uh, the information of the camera to newly created uh, object, and then uh, we get uh, IP address of the uh, message source from the RINFO object, and then we create a new uh, TCP client object in here uh, to make connection with the camera system manager uh, application. Uh, in here, we try to connect uh, the given uh, port and to new camera. And this is also a callback function. Uh, when the connection is made uh, through uh, this newly connected device, this function is uh, executed. And then we implement uh, data close and error uh, event listeners of the uh, this new uh, TCP client object. Whenever a data is taken uh, from server, uh, we just uh, take it and send uh, this data to uh, web clients by calling send alarm by socket. Of course, uh, camera can send, uh, can send all, only alarm messages through this uh, TCP uh, connection. So we just take data, don't control and send to socket. And whenever a TCP connection is closed, first uh, we send uh, information about this connected uh, camera to web clients, and then we remove it from the our device list. So replication. Uh, has also HTTP server, uh, and this is the code of the HTTP server of a server application. In here, it serves static contents, uh, which is located in here, in here, and it makes real-time web socket uh, connection to connect to web clients. Uh, we just use Express and Socket.io modules uh, from uh, uh, which is uh, taken with NPM package manager. HTTP uh, module is uh, Node.js core module. Uh, this is the configuration of uh, socket IO code, but I'll skip this. WebSocket uh, Web uh, can uh, make us uh, a real-time communication between server application and uh, web clients. Uh, it has a connection event listener. Uh, we implement this connection event listener to get a co connection from the web clients. Whenever a web client is connected to our server application, this uh, callback function is executed. In this callback function, uh, we implement a new event uh, listener named get device list and other uh, config event listener. Web client can request list of already connected uh, cameras through uh, this event. Uh, 
and it can request to change a setting of the any camera through config event. Uh, when this uh, config event is emitted, uh, this uh, web socket sent the configuration parameters of the uh, video application, and then it called sent devices conf uh, to send this taken uh, data to our uh, TCP client connection. Then we just save uh, this new uh, web socket to our web socket list. Uh, server application also uh, sends uh, data to web clients. For example, it can send camera info and alarm. We just uh, call emit function of the uh, web socket and we give event name and data. Taken alarm are sent through this uh, function to all connected uh, web clients. This is just uh, functions used at previous slide. There are the other uh, web socket functions called by server application to send uh, data to connected uh, web clients. Uh, we send data through new cam, update cam, and drop cam uh, events to web clients. These are the data about uh, these events. Web interface is served by uh, server application. It is written in socket IO and AngularJS, which is uh, AX based HTML5 development environment. Actually, this is uh, another story, and I'll skip the details. This is the example usage of Socket.io at uh, web client site, and uh, this example is taken from the website of the uh, Socket.io. It just uh, takes data from these uh, event listeners and send data to uh, web server by calling emit function of the Socket. This is the Socket.io call of our web client site. There are uh, two functions. Uh, set MD mode and set video source. Uh, web clients can send data to server through these functions. It can uh, change push detection mode of the camera by calling config and message. There are also event listeners to get data from server, like uh, get device list, uh, camera info. As uh, mentioned previously, new cam, update cam, drop cam, and alarm. Whenever an alarm is taken, uh, we just get data of alarm and uh, push this data to alarm list. AngularJS updates with when model is changed. Uh, this alarm table uh, is updated at the uh, web browser automatically when we update this list at the model. Uh, this is the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you for your patience. Now uh, we'll try to make our demo. Uh, let's let's start our server application. Uh, can we power off these fake cameras? Actually, this server application can also uh, run on uh, this embedded uh, fake uh, application. It uh, starts to listen the connections from the given port and then we have our web interface okay our client is connected but there is no uh, online cameras and we will power on uh, these boards takes nearly one minute uh, to boot up. Uh, 
and our uh, first fake camera is found and we just uh, show its uh, information in here, its IP, the uh, latest time of the taken message from the UDP port and uh, camera status, camera location and uh, video mode and video source of the fake uh, video application in here. And there is no alarm in here because uh, motion detection mode is opened in uh, turn off mode. Then we connect the camera. Let's uh, set motion detection mode to one. And we have alarm message which is taken from the, uh, our camera. Mode one. In mode one, camera sends uh, periodic alarms at each uh, 10 seconds. Let's change its uh, motion detection mode to mode two. And it just updated with the new heartbeat message. Uh, let's change the video source uh, mode to thermal of device ID bit one, just changed second. Uh, in here, it sends uh, alarm messages at every 10 seconds, but with the change of the motion detection mode, it will send uh, heartbeat messages at uh, 30 uh, seconds. It will take a while for the new message. And the new message is taken. Let's change motion detection mode of the uh, third camera. And we have an alarm message from the third camera also in here. Uh, you can find the codes of demo from this uh, address. The whole uh, code samples are in here. And thank you for your patience. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we'd like to uh, answer. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, you can get pre-installed uh, modules, but you have to uh, install NPM uh, to at least one camera and uh, take uh, these modules. And you can use uh, the source of the modules at anywhere. Actually, you offline. can use the... JavaScript-based modules directly copy them to the modules folder and you can use them, but some modules have C++ bindings and they can be some problematic when you copy from your desktop PC to embedded system, so you must build them on your embedded device. So the only way to ensure it's going to be working fully is to... If it's uh, completely JavaScript-based, it's no problem, I think, because I did it on my experience and it's no problem. But if you have C++, coming into the game, then you can have some problems. But you can also uh, compile it at a, a sample uh, card and then use the, these binaries at the same uh, con configuration. Okay. Yes? I think at least uh, hundreds of megabytes. Pardon? Hundreds of megabytes, I think, at least. It would be problematic, in my opinion. I never tried on these lower memory devices, but 
uh, the device we are working on here, the iGap has uh, five, uh, 500 megabytes RAM, and we are using, I think, 300 megabytes for the uh, Linux, and the other part is uh, divided for the uh, DSP part. So we are running on actually 300 megabytes, and we are fine. We are not using much of it. But I think um, below the 100 megabytes range, you can have some problems, maybe. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, thank you for your participation. Thank you.